Um, let's continue. Let's move on. So, next thing on the list to talk about here is the DJ strike in Berlin. I know most of you don't care about this sort of stuff because it's not going to be of your interest, but I found this to be very interesting only because it was good to see for once um, people within the electronic music scene, especially abroad, actually standing up for something. Um, and I feel like when it comes to DJs, similar to stand-up comedians, they're quite selfish. They're quite money-hungry and they don't really, you know, when something impacts their pockets, they're not going to want to stand by it. But the fact that a lot of these DJs are deciding to protest um, these really insane laws in Germany that essentially are, you know, putting DJs in a position where they can't be politically active and basically share their opinions of what's going on in Palestine um, in fear of maybe getting their gigs taken away from them. They're now basically striking and decided not to play in Germany at all. It's really interesting. But um, there's this quick video courtesy of RA where they talk about it and I think it's a really well done. So we're going to play it and you're going to see what's going on here because I think this is a really interesting whole issue that's happening so let's play this video it's courtesy of RA it's called why DJ strike against Berlin Center over Palestine and we're going to play it now you may have noticed a number of artists boycotting German clubs and festivals Scratcher DVA, Campire, Raggi Rags and others have all pulled out of important gigs in Berlin including at Berghain the world's most famous club there have been a lot of confusing news stories referencing strikes, cancellations, and clauses being implemented and retracted. Und anti-diskriminierenden Umgangs eingesetzt werden. Hearing a black dude speak German like that is fucking wild, isn't it? It's always a trip, isn't it? Um, you don't see a lot in Berlin because everyone speaks English, but seeing people, you know, that look like you speaking that language that sounds so brutal is fucking interesting, isn't it? Und kannst in Deichen Bielen sei. Jesus, on Kansen Dyke and Bielen, huh? on Schordigan, in Schordigan. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. I love it. So, what actually happened? Berlin has historically been one of the few cities in the world that treats electronic music as an art form. Which is the reason why, again, I think most people that go to Berlin like come back, oh my God, I wish my city was like Berlin. It's the only place like that in the world. There's no, I don't think there's any other city that treats clubbing like an art form or that has clubs like a cultural institution. It doesn't exist. I don't think so. I can't think of a single place, which is why a lot of their clubs don't close down or don't move and shit. Like it's, it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. So when you go to these type of places, enjoy them for what they are, but don't start judging your city based on what's happening in Berlin. Cause Berlin's like a, it's like never Levin land. Yeah. You know I mean, it doesn't, it's not really real. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's real, but it's not really real. Because of this, Many Berlin clubs, festivals, and even DJs receive government funding, totaling hundreds of millions of euros every year. Germany is also home to one of the largest- That could never happen in America, by the way. <laughs> never. Government funding for nightclubs. <laughs> what? It's populations of Palestinians outside the Middle East, with up to 30,000 living in Berlin alone. I did not know that, by the way. That's an interesting fact, right? They've got the highest amount of Palestinians outside of the middle east living in berlin that's a crazy thing i wonder why they all tend to go to berlin of all places no there's so many places don't they pass quite a few countries before they get to germany i wonder why they end up in berlin that's an interesting thing i probably need to dig into that a bit deeper but interesting that they all end up in that tiny 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 place many recipients of government cultural funding are politically outspoken including in support of palestinians or book international artists who are actively pro-palestine so why is this deemed to be a problem the German but then the, the funny thing is to kind of note when i've done a bit of research myself there's also a surprisingly high number of israeli people involved in the electronic music scene in berlin so there's a high concentration of palestinian people coming over and there's also a lot of the scene, a lot of the infrastructure, a lot of maybe, you know, just the city of Berlin itself. There's a lot of people there from Israel. So imagine the, the, the friction that exists there. You've got actually Israelis who live there and you've got obviously Palestinians who live there and they're all kind of jostling for some level of like voice or whatever it may be. So it's definitely a politically fraught and um, contentious area, definitely, especially what's going on at the moment. German authorities have banned many pro-Palestinian demonstrations in recent years, saying the crackdown is to stop 
public disorder and prevent public anti-Semitism. But how the country defines what is or isn't anti-Semitic is the subject of fierce debate. In 2017, Germany's federal government adopted what is known as the IHRA Working Definition of Anti-Semitism. <laughs> Don't you find that funny? I hate RA. That sounds like I hate resident advisor. <laughs> That's what I all thought it was. It sounds like something. Um, what's his face? Um, uh, what's that fucking DJ's name? What Omar S would write. This sounds like an Omar S album title. I hate RA. <laughs> a definition that sparks very mixed reactions. Why the definition is so controversial is the problem of how the definition is applied. People implement it because they think it would be just a simple answer to address a complex problem, like how to prevent the spread of Israel-related anti-Semitism. You cannot address such a complex problem with just uh, throwing out a definition then we are set. Some observers believe that IHRA... So IHRA, IHRA is accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide, denying Jewish people their right to self-determination by claiming the existence of state of Israel, applying double standards by requiring a bit of by requiring of it behavior not expected or demanded by other democratic nations, using symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism, i.e.g. claims of Jews killing Jesus, but they did though, no? <laughs> blood libel or characterize israel as israelis drawing comparisons of contemporary israeli policy to the blah. it must be so hard to be israeli or to be from palestine nowadays it's i was thinking about it during the asian cup the asian cup is on at the moment right you actually want to celebrate or you want to support your own country so what you can't fly the israeli flag because you're afraid people are going to think you are advocating for genocide <laughs> right when israel's football team plays you kind of have to what like just not wave your flag you kind of have just have to hold it in and stuff like oh god damn a definition is a critical tool in combating anti-semitism which is on the rise globally Critics say that some of the IHRA's examples of anti-Semitism are being used to prevent criticism of the state of Israel oh, and to unfairly silence pro-Palestinian okay, voices. See, I see, I see what's going on now. In January, the Berlin Senate introduced a new clause to its application process for cultural funding, requiring all recipients to agree to the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. In a letter of protest, Berlin artists and cultural workers said they feared the clause would effectively force them to cancel events and disinvite speakers who are critical of Israel for fear of losing funding. To be fair, there are some people who are doing what they should be doing, whatever they, they believe in standing up for in terms of standing up for people of Palestine or, or people from Israel, whatever. But there are also some people who are going super far and essentially, you know, advocating for you know, um, genocide on the other side, right? Who are going pro Hamas and stuff. That's when it gets a bit crazy. So there are extremes on either end. There are those Israeli people who have absolutely no empathy for what's going on in Gaza, um, you know, who just respond super callously and coldly when you show them pictures of kids literally being blown up and women and children being splained all over the floor. But then on the other side, you've got people who are legitimately advocating for a terrorist group. Do you know what I mean? And basically calling on them to kind of bomb more places and stuff where it's like, come on, like you can't go that far. But unfortunately, this is a war and a battle that's been long entrenched. It's like, it's just so, it's just so, um, it's just so kind of deep. Um, it's been so long. There's been so much blood already spilled that it's almost impossible to get the conversation the debate around it to be anywhere reasonable it's not going to happen especially now that we've seen all these horrible images the death tolls rising you know like people's homes are destroyed lives are it's just it's impossible to kind of get people around the table to speak about this in a grown-up way or to post about it protest about it in a grown-up way especially when you're seeing your government you know basically sending more arms to people who you feel like are committing the genocide it's just hard to sit by idly and watch that especially if you're politically active it's hard to kind of just sleep at night really i'm sure there are people out there who are legitimately having like sleepless nights <laughs> you know thinking about this sort of shit because it kind of touches them especially if you've got family imagine if you've got family out there on either side you know what i mean it's just like god damn it bro 
Like it must be super difficult. And then you got the German government telling you, oh, you can't, you can't flip and talk about this stuff because if you do, then you're going to be deemed as an anti-Semite because what you're standing up for the people of Palestine. Like, come on, man. Like, don't be ridiculous. This scenario had already played out in the case of Oyun, a state funded cultural center for diasporic, migrant and international art. In November, Oyun hosted a morning event and vigil in response to the October 7th attacks and the rising death toll in Gaza. It was held by Jewish Voice for Just Peace in the Middle East. The authorities <laughs> in Berlin pressured Oyun to cancel the event for being politically charged, but it went ahead regardless. The result? The venue's 1 million euros in annual funding was revoked. I think the accusation is very telling. It's a non-Jewish German governmental body the city council of Berlin, telling a Jewish group, which consists mostly of Israelis, by the way, or former Israelis who live now in Berlin, um, that they are anti-Semites for having a critical or very critical um, point of view when it comes to the Israel-Palestine conflict. Following the formalization of the IHRA definition into cultural funding, there was a wave of protests. Strike Germany, an emerging coalition of workers in Berlin's cultural sector, called on international artists to turn down invitations to speak and perform at German cultural institutions. That's pretty big. That is pretty big. That is pretty big, to be fair. And again, like, <clears throat> I'm not somebody that believes that dance music or clubbing should be political. But if you are politically active, then standing up for what you believe in in this way, where it's actually costing you and it's hurting your pocket, it does go to show that you're about your shit. You know what I mean? You're not just talking for talking's sake. Like you're actually giving up something. You are giving up advancing your career. You're giving up lining your pockets. You're giving up doing the thing that you love just so you can fight um, the good fight for people who are unable to kind of stand up for themselves right? or to bring attention to what they're going through and to call for a ceasefire, whatever you want, you know, whatever your end point is. I think that is a sign that these guys and girls are not fucking around and they really do walk the walk. So I'm, I'm all for it. Again, I, I would like clubbing to be apolitical, no politics involved in it whatsoever, but it's just almost impossible because everybody that's involved in dance music has very strong political opinions. And when you have strong political opinions and you own these places and platforms, you're going to let those political opinions maybe influence the people that you pick to play at your places, represent your places, blah, 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 blah. The movement gained traction, gathering thousands of signatures and also resulted in several artists from the UK, Uganda and Kenya pulling out of the popular experimental art and music festival, CTM. A dance floor is a place that brings people together. If you're then going to say, well, we'll only give you money for this dance floor to exist if you only let the people in who think like us, that's the problem. And the, the good thing about her, Joy T, is again, I'm, I don't really listen to her DJ and stuff. It's not my style. It's not my taste levels, don't get me wrong. Or it's not my preference, but she's a pretty big DJ. So if someone like her is joining this Strike Germany thing, then this goes to show that, you know, like she's got something to risk, basically. She's got bookings that she's clearly missing out on. Um, and that goes to show that there is definitely a lot of weight behind it. And it definitely will add a lot of, um, what do you think called? A lot of legitimacy to what they're doing when they've got these sort of big artists who have a lot to risk. Because it's one thing when smaller acts that don't really have many bookings are striking Germany. But when people who usually tour their year in, year out are striking Germany until they are, you know, they get their means, their kind of, you know, whatever they're intending to have met, that goes to show that these guys are really going about things the right way. I'd love to see it. I'm not going to lie. In an unexpected twist, the new clause was suddenly retracted last week by the Berlin Senate, which said it took the decision partly in response to the legal and critical voices that saw the introduced clause as a restriction on artistic freedom. There is uncertainty about the legality of this clause. For now, the clause is not going into effect. So what exactly happens now? If the clause has been retracted, what does it mean for the earlier decision to revoke Oyun's funding? What about Oyun? And will cultural workers continue to strike? Strike Germany says the retraction of the clause is only a temporary victory and encourages artists to continue to strike against what they call Germany's wider crackdown on pro-Palestinian solidarity and artistic freedom. Yeah, to be fair, like, I think now, at this point, 
you just have to be mindful that especially the way it's gone i think in the beginning when it was maybe a little bit more um contentious and the details were a little bit sparse but now we have a pretty clear handle on what's going on over there in gaza and we have an idea on who's doing most of the killings and we have an idea on who's causing most of the hardship who's spilling most of the blood i think it's pretty insane to be putting people in a position where they can't openly um support palestinians it's pretty or it's pretty insane especially when the conversation has gone past the hamas thing because i don't really think i've seen even some of my most liberal friends or most less leaning left-leaning friends i've not really seen many people out there really advocating for hamas i don't really i don't really i don't know maybe they do exist but most people are calling for a ceasefire most people are um pro-palestinian just because of the you know the resources the money the funding the arms um the you know all the flipping nonsense that's going on in israel there's just no other there's no other logical place to kind of stand on instead of the victims who are clearly the ones who are suffering the most um and even if you don't believe that just because you want to see the war end and you don't want to see more people's lives get ruined you're just like hey let's just have a seat let's just let's just call for a ceasefire so we can at least get some semblance of normality restored back in this country and have people not constantly live in fear of their lives but to put djs in a place where they can't play because they wear a scarf or because they have a t-shirt with a palestinian flag on is absolutely insane especially in a place like berlin especially in a place like germany but just berlin specifically where they you know they profess to be a place where they are open to people from all walks of life you can go there and express yourself to your heart's content and now you're in a position where it's like no you can express yourself but only certain things the the, the, the things that we allow the things that we permit and if you do express yourself, it's going to have to be the agreed doctrine. It's going to have to be the agreed views that we are kind of espousing. And that's obviously insane. Um, I'd love there to get to a place where, you know, generally people don't try and share their political leanings. Um, you know, when it comes to artistic, it's, it's, not, it's not really necessary, really, in all manner of ways. But for the people that do, um, you know, limiting their ability to like work and do their art, it's just insane. It really is legitimately insane. Um, you're seeing a lot of people doing it people getting taken off of flipping lineups um whole berlin is going through some issues now at the moment people not being able to do sets and stuff like it's a really unfortunate situation and i just hope that there is some resolution in the end um that really does kind of you know get back to some semblance of you know normalcy because this is just batshit crazy but i do like the fact that these guys stand up for their shit because I don't think you're ever going to get this level of solidarity, this level of collective action, this level of people actually being out on the street protesting day in, day out within the dance music scene here in London. No one gives a fuck. Like, you could never get this level of cooperation and, you know, like, so dirty people. People here don't give a fuck. So, um, love and support to everybody out there in Berlin fighting a good fight, you know, and hopefully they get what they need. Hopefully they get what they need.